Gelman will be here live. He stars on the NBC show, NBC show Go On, which is a show about laughing through your tears. Yeah. Kind of like this one. Oh. <laughs> Way to bring it down, man. Hey, listen, I had I had a kind of a rough night. I uh, heard. Uh, what listen, happened? Turns out, maybe microwaving a pile of beef. Hmm. Not, not a great idea. idea. Not a great idea. That's, that's really funny to me because it was your idea. Okay. Fair. And Sarah and I both ate this beef and I we were okay. <laughs> I love this last night. It's like just before I died. <laughs> the uh, Yeah, no, what I thought happens? it was a good idea. Microwave Steve seemed like he was yeah. fine, right? That guy yeah. looks like he's uh, healthy and yeah. shaped. Kind of, right? No, apparently not. Uh, about 7.30 in the evening, uh, downstairs, not a happy place to be. Oh. Yeah, so I curled up in a ball. I'm so oh. sorry to hear that. How was your evening? It was great. I, I caught up on The Walking Dead and sure. Homeland. Oh, Homeland. That is, that is the nice. best. I love the Isn't Homeland. Isn't it the best? Oh, it's it was crazy so what happened last night with the... You don't watch Homeland, do you? Not at all. <laughs> I let bet, me just say, I, let me guess, let you're me guess. missing out. Let me guess. Ready? I've never yeah. seen Homeland, but uh, Claire Danes probably cried. Oh. She might have cried last okay. night. Okay, there you go. <laughs> that might have happened. <laughs> Time now to run down the top things on the web. We're going around the net! Right after you watch Homeland, you hit the internet, you look uh, for some videos. For the rest of the night. Uh, thank you for working I think I really hard at that. Last night. <laughs> What's welcome. up first for us? It's a video from the bad lip reading folks. Here is their redub take on Twilight. I'm freezing. Uh, yeah, I could tell. <laughs> they popped up. Uh oh, yeah, it's freezing. Well, no, no, wait, I need your hairspray. <laughs> I ran over a gummy bear. You want pizza? Now? Hey, stickers are embarrassing. Baby, we don't need your fancy words. Well, there's dwarves. Absolutely cute dwarves. I do like a nice egg. <laughs> and you picked me a cookie. But I see that you like tweaker Mexican girls. And fine dining. <laughs> This version is much less stupid than the real thing. Yeah. That's true. Uh, did you know that Twilight is really our Vietnam, Candace? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, uh, fun fact, Ted Nugent actually crapped his pants to get out of Vietnam. Oh. And I did the same thing to get out of watching this movie. <laughs> really? I watched this movie by myself at the movie theater. That's like the fourth saddest story I've ever heard. Yeah, I don't know why I went by myself. That is kind of sad. You couldn't huh? get anyone to go with you. No, it was late at night. It was a last minute decision. And it been out for months. You could have put something on Craigslist. Someone would have gone. <laughs> I think I might have been better off without that. Yeah, good point. <laughs> now, spiders. Right. You know I hate them, Ooh, sure. but not as much as this guy. Brass nuts, dude? Brass nuts? <laughs> 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 I messed up. I just messed up. Mom! Mom! Yeah. <laughs> the uh, least surprising part of that video is that he ends it with calling his mother. It, it makes me very upset that he's using a brass knuckle because it's only this much protection from your actual hands, and everybody knows you can't get that close to a spider. Uh, Candace, you have to use something bigger. I don't know if you've ever seen a movie from the 80s, but a brass knuckle is the most powerful weapon known to man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You even have to touch that. Like, oh, what would you? How, like, how, for, how do you kill a spider? You take a shoe. Yeah. And you throw it across the room, <laughs> and you hope that you kill it. Okay, you That's had me. You spiders. had me at take a shoe. Yeah. Lost me at throw it across the room. Well, I, I've only actually killed it one time that way. The rest, they always get away. But I'm too scared to get that up close. Sure. You know, you could just, you know, maybe use a bigger shoe. You don't have to get that close <laughs> to it. Just pull out my clown shoes next yeah, time. Yeah, I'm sure you have clown shoes lying around. I do. That's the best I way do. to kill bugs. Okay, that's a good note. Thank you, Matt. You're welcome. And finally, a crazy video that's all over the 
the internet. This comes from a Brazilian prank show called the Silvio Santos Program, and it is terrifying. That's my favorite. But those people were all okay, right? Uh, actually, Candace, uh... favorite thing ever. Uh, fun fact, the Brazilian elevator only sounds like a sex move. <laughs> going on in the world. It is now less than one month away from December 21st, 2012. Or as ignorant Americans who spend more time watching ancient aliens than they do communicating with actual people refer to it as the end of days. Thank you. <laughs> and a Los Angeles area survival group is ready. Whoa. It has openly recruited 66 of these, uh, we'll call them people, uh, <laughs> with a specific set of skills. Actually, 65. They're still waiting to hear back from Liam Neeson. Uh. Here's a hint. Write him a check. He'll obviously do anything. <laughs> And I have to say, as a member of the team over here at Attack of the Show, we are very flattered that you guys are going through all this trouble just because our show is ending. Oh. But don't worry, it's not the end of the world, and we'll all be working again very soon. Except for Doug. Nobody <laughs> likes Doug. <laughs> Doug. Ugh. Oh, wait, what's that? Oh, I'm sorry, being told it's not for our final day in the office. Oh, they are doing it for the end of the world predicted by the ancient Mayans? Yes. Crap. Who am I going to sell these 450 gallon containers of attack of the dough to? <laughs> Hang on. I have a Mayan sticker just for this kind of situation. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> That's right. Perfect. Did you know that when the Mayans come back on December 21st, they will kill everyone who doesn't have 450 gallons of cookie dough in their front yard? <laughs> True story. Check the wiki. <laughs> Not buying it? Sounds ridiculous? Well, so does believing in the end of the world. On December 21st, 2012, I promise you, everyone is going to be fine on December 22nd. Except for Doug. <laughs> Doug will never work again. It's all right, he's kind of a jerk. Hey, TV land, it's time to play a game, okay? When I say Bahrain, you say, no, you don't say human rights violations. Here's what, we're gonna try this again. When I say Bahrain, you say, no, okay, not tear gas attacks by an increasingly desperate police force. Here's what we're gonna do. When I say Bahrain, you're supposed to say party! Yeah! Or at least that was the hope of the clearly misguided U.S. State Department when they appointed Andrew W.K. as the cultural ambassador to the Middle East. I did not make this up. The singer-songwriter known for hit, hit singles, really, uh, such as It's Time to Party, Party Hard, and Long Live the Party. <laughs> Sensing a theme here, he planned to visit music venues, elementary schools, and the University of Bahrain, all to, quote, show the good people of Bahrain the power of positive partying. Oh, oh, okay. 
Thankfully, someone at the State Department used Google. <laughs> and before sending him out to the Middle East with a beer bong and noisemakers, they put a screeching halt to the whole affair. Oh, oh. Canceled by the U.S. State Department. <laughs> Fantastic graphic, guys. Uh, it did not, here's the, here's the deal. Andrew W.K. did not meet their standards. He was, quote, not the best choice. Really? <laughs> not the best choice? <laughs> let's be honest, he wasn't even a choice. <laughs> Why exactly? Well, let's take a look as to how Andrew W.K. Here's him partying with chicks and dudes. Now, sorry, that guy party was great. Uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're now gonna take a look at how the Baranian people party. Notice, no chicks, just dudes. Now, this is how Andrew W.K. deals with the police. Yeah. Now, this is how the people of Bahrain deal with the police. Take a look. Oh. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yep. You're going to get out of the way. Oh. Look out. Oh. There you go. Now, this is how Andrew W.K. uses gasoline. <laughs> and this is how the Baranis use gasoline. Oh. Yeah. In short, they'd have killed Andrew W.K. faster than they would have stoned this lady who just wanted to drive. <laughs> Sad but true, guys. Yeah. If we really want the blood of American musicians on our hands, why not just send Hank Williams Jr. and Ted Nugent? Yeah. At least they'd go down fighting. <laughs> Unless it was Vietnam, then Ted would crap his pants. <laughs> Finally, every winter, a group of economists at PNC Financial decide to get together and not tell us how to avoid going over the fiscal cliff, but instead, they tell us how much all the stuff in the classic Christmas carol, The 12 Days of Christmas, costs. You know, PNC Financial, this reminds me of the time that I read about whether or not Nick Fury's actions in The Avengers were legal. <laughs> it's a pointless exercise. Anyway, I'm sure you're familiar with the song. It goes, on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. Yeah. Yeah. As if anyone actually wants that. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever tried taking care of a pear tree? I haven't, but I'm sure it's hard. You probably gotta water it and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this year, the Economist said it would cost a whopping $107,000 to buy the birds, the musicians, and the golden rings in the song. <laughs> Two things. One, if you actually get someone all those birds, you know, seven swans a swim swimming, six geese a laying, four collie birds, three French hens, and two turtle, turtle doves, their house is going to look like an effed up episode of Hoarders. <laughs> And no one wants a bird seed and feces covered floor for Christmas, except for this lady from Hoarders. Hi, tree girl. It's like potato chips. You can't just have one. You gotta have more. You just get attached. Just like a potato chip lady. And two, we're in a recession and labor is cheap. I can shave like 60 grand off of this thing easy, okay? Here's what you do. You want 10 lords of leaping? You just drive by Home Depot on Sunset. No problem, okay? Eight maids of milking. Here's what you do. Head down Santa Monica Boulevard at about 2 a.m. You can pick some up. Sure, they might not be biological maids, but when it's dark, it's pretty hard to tell. At least that's what I tell myself. The only expensive parts here are the five golden rings, but guess what? Here's someone who can help. This December, money might be tight for a variety of reasons, but there's still plenty to jump for. Friends and family, the warm scent of cinnamon and nutmeg in the air, and an ever-increasing upward trend in gold prices. <laughs> Wait up, wouldn't that make it harder to buy five golden rings? Well, a bar humbug to you too, Ebenezer Myra. <laughs>
Why don't you try taking those golden rings into the three wise men of Reseda? <laughs> Oh boy. Three wise men of Reseda guarantees you the highest return rate on your gold. So turn in those heirlooms into a bitch and new iPad faster than. <laughs> yeah, that lord was packed to the brim with balderdash. <laughs> now, here's the real holiday message. This December, stuff your faces with fruitcake. Buy that fancy new car. Arrange that disgusting motel orgy. Because come December 21st, the Earth will align with the center of the Milky Way, heating the magma beneath the Yellowstone supervolcano, <laughs> enough to activate the millions of Mayan nanorobots buried in ancient times. <laughs> Okay, the Mayans did not have nanorobots. Shut up! Oh. <laughs> now, when the nanorobots awake, they will need to recharge their batteries with human flesh. <laughs> Millions will perish as the Mayan scourge devours humanity from the inside out. Oh, oh, oh. They'll build an enormous step pyramid with our skeletons and play complicated ball games with our skulls. <laughs> so, go ahead. Buy that Wii U, because soon you'll be begging for mercy from the unfeeling nanorobot Zapakna, demonic personification of the Earth's crust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Still ahead, Karen Gillan from Doctor Who will be here. This portion of Attack of the Show is brought to you by Honda Power Sports. For great deals on gifts that go, it's go time at your Honda dealer. Our next guest hangs out with Doctor Who, and I am totally jealous. Kind of just gave away the end of the half of seven, season seven. But yeah. anyway, your run as the companion is, is over. It's over. It's Are you, all done. How do you feel about that? I kind of feel quite sad, actually. Yeah. I miss it. It was really fun. But I think, you know, you've got a choice of how you look at things. You can be sad that it's over or happy that it happened. Okay, so you're sad that it's over. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was so much fun. No, like, so was it like, was it hugely emotional on the set, like that last day of filming? Was oh it... my God. I mean, yeah, it was, it was, a, there was a weird serene feeling. Yeah. And everyone could feel it. And then we all just hugged at the end in the, in the dark. I'm sorry, it's actually not bigger on the inside. <laughs> it's physically just a box on set. I'm sorry. Don't do it's how that. they make television for all of us to enjoy. Now, listen, we had David Tennant on the program, and I asked him. Hey, DT. Yeah, uh, if he got to keep, yeah, D, are we calling I've him DT never, now? I've never called him that. <laughs> right. no. I mean, I'll start it. Yeah, we had DT on the program, <laughs> and uh, I asked him, and he got to keep all of his clothes, right? Yeah. And then John Barrowman tells us, he was in uh, last week hosting for a while, he told us he's got, he's got Daleks, he's got Tardises around the house. I am so angry. Did you? I, I feel like your, your response there tells me you might have gotten the shaft on this. I didn't get anything. I had to physically steal the binoculars <laughs> from the TARDIS. You physically removed them? Yep. Did you need like a screwdriver or anything like that? Or no, they, were, they oh, weren't yeah, really they're attached. Just the... They're just there. So I was like, swipe. Um, and I had them there. <laughs> so when they go to look for the... For the binoculars, they're not going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get to keep even the police uniform, nothing? No. They go into exhibitions and oh, stuff so people can go and lame. look at them. That I see, I would have just started taking all sorts of things. Yeah, I wish I, I did. I would have taken Matt Smith's wallet. Yeah? I would have taken Arthur Darville's vest. That seems like a thing you'd want, right? A vest? Yeah, I like his vest. He's got a nice vest he wears sometimes. What, in the show? Yeah, in the show, he's got a nice red vest. Am I the only one who watches this program? <laughs> Listen, I have, here's, here's the deal. I have an obsession with British television. So yeah. much so that I illegally download a lot of it. Nice. Because, you know, if I want to keep up on Downton Abbey, yeah. I have to do it that way. You should way. be able to watch it I can't wait you want. for America. No. Here's the deal. There's a show on in the afternoon. It's called Bargain Hunt. Don't laugh. Sorry. <laughs> have, yeah. you, have you ever seen Bargain Hunt? Yeah. It's the greatest show on television, is it not? Is it? Oh, God. <laughs> Listen. I mean, really? 
I okay. Now you're gonna insult Bargainhead, but I I'm heard sorry, that I mean... you are obsessed with certain documentaries that have been on Netflix. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna mention a couple. Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Bieber. Oh. Katy Perry. <laughs> That's what I'm watching at the moment. That's what you're watching on Netflix. I watched that on the way here. Why? Because I love seeing their journey and rise to uh, <laughs> whatever they are. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Singing sensations. I'm still not following. Why is this enjoy? Like, do you like their music, or is it just kind of a it's thing where you're like, It's not about the music. Yeah, okay. It's about the journey to okay. how they got to that point. And I love it when they look all depressed and stuff, <laughs> and then they have to go on stage, and then they're just like. <laughs> 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 I don't know why. It's, it's, I don't know. I, I've, I've skipped those so many times in the documentary section. So oh, you're you telling me I in? should tune in. Really, you, sh you need. Which to. one's the best of the three? Um, Justin Bieber one was pretty good. Really? Yeah. <laughs> he's like 18 and Canadian. Nothing bad could have happened to him. Yeah. No, he's had a pretty normal life, I guess. But I get what. Pretty until, normal until the millions until upon that. millions of dollars came. Listen. <laughs> La last time you were here, you were about to go shoot a horror movie. Yes. And you did. I did it. Oculus. Oculus. How did that go? It was really good. Where'd you shoot it? We shot it in Mobile in Alabama. Oh. What? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I Church believe Candace might be so from there. How did you enjoy up. your time in Alabama? I loved it. It reminds me of Scotland. Uh, I'm sorry. Of home. No, no, I just watched Skyfall. Uh, there's a scene in Scotland, oh. and it looks nothing like Alabama. Oh, no, not, not physically, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but the fried food and the music. Fried food and music, essentially, is what you're telling me. So yeah. I think that uh, Scotland's a good place for me to go because I enjoy both those things. Yeah, well, you should get what's out the, What's the worst fried thing that you had, like the, the unhealthiest thing you had while you were in Alabama? Um, maybe fried alligator. I don't know how unhealthy Whoa. that is, but it was pretty weird. And it's... they were just floating around locally. Just walking down the street, there's a piece of well, yeah, like, fried alligator was... floating down the street? No, 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 actual <laughs> live alligators. They were ah. Yeah, and, and this local told me that you have to run in diagonals if you get chased by one. Yeah, zigzag pattern. Yeah. Yeah, they don't know what to do with that. Yeah. They have short... <laughs> <laughs> they have short, stubby arms. They're just like, what am I doing? I can't go left or right. This was a fun chat. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to Karen Gillen. Go buy Doctor Who Season 7 Part 1. Available now and on Blu-ray, on DVD. And we've got hobbits and zombies in today's movie-themed gaming apps. I hope the zombies eat the hobbits. <laughs>time to curl up in front of a good movie than when the temperature drops. But when you've plundered your Blu-ray collection, plummet into the story yourself with these movie-themed games. Boomstick. There's a new king at the box office, and he's jumping straight from the arcade to your iPad. Disney's Wreck-It Ralph for the iPhone and iPad is now available with three playable mini-games. Jump from Game Central Station to each game, just like the oversized, lovable bad guy. Get nostalgic with 8-bit graphics and Fix-It Fred, blast away some cybugs and Heroes Duty, or see how high up the candy stalks you can get in Sweet Climber. After you've mastered each level, check back in with Game Central and see where you rank with the rest of the world. Get Wreck-It Ralph for your iOS device for 99 cents in the App Store. But who needs a box office king when you can rule Middle Earth? In anticipation of the first installment of Peter Jackson's next trilogy, Kabam Incorporated has released The Hobbit Kingdoms of Middle-Earth. This massive multiplayer strategy game sets you as either an elf or dwarf, attempting to drive hordes of goblins from the lands beyond the Misty Mountains. Meet up with familiar characters like Gandalf and Bilbo, even appoint a hero like Legolas to lead your army. Stay connected to the web and chat strategy real-time with your fellow soldiers. For free, this app is a win-win, so grab it now in the iTunes Store. Ever since the 1992 cult classic Army of Darkness, we've all wanted a chainsaw for an arm. And now, Backflip Studios has made that dream a reality with Army of Darkness Defense. This android tug-of-war defense game pits you as our time-traveling hero, Ash, against endless hordes of deadites. Team up with different allies, see your favorite characters, and enjoy original music and hilarious quotes from Sam Raimi's classic. Your Android device won't transform into a power glove, but you can certainly get groovy with this app free from the Google Play Store. So 
Whether you're reliving your favorite cult classic, playing along with today's box office hits, or prepping for your next cinematic adventure, you can't miss with these movie-themed games. Here are your top stories. If you've ever had your cell phone stolen in New York City, the NYPD, NYPD may have a record of your phone calls. You see, after you report a crime, the police will obtain a record of all calls made after it was swiped in an effort to track down the thief. Makes sense, right? Well, the New York Times is reporting that the department not only tracks calls made by the thief, but also tracks personal calls made by the phone's rightful owner. All of these numbers are then compiled into an internal searchable database that police can then use for any investigative purpose. Civil rights advocates are understandably upset, claiming that the department should not be permitted to hold on to phone records indefinitely if they are not relevant to active criminal investigations. Meanwhile, police officials would not say if they've used any of the records while investigating other crimes, which means that they probably have. I guess the moral here is F the police. Yeah! I'm just kidding. Please don't arrest me. I'm too pretty to go to jail. And I've got some tech news for you. General Motors announced today that they will be the first to feature Siri in their upcoming line of cars. Beginning early next year, both Chevy Sonic and Spark will offer hands-free compatibility with Apple's Assistant, although you'll still have to own an iPhone 4S or 5 to use it, so Android users who are hoping to get a taste of Siri are out of luck. And Google is making it easier than ever to send large files via email. The company just released a new feature for Gmail users that allows them to send files that are up to 10 gigabytes in size. That's 400 times larger than Gmail's previous size cap. And the first content update for World of Warcraft, Miss of Pandaria, is available now. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are such nerds. Called Landfall, the update comes with five new playable scenarios, two new factions, and a bunch of minor upgrades. Ashamed. And finally, I've got a crazy rumor to tell you guys. Word, all right, word on the street is that Joseph Gordon Levitt will appear in the upcoming Justice League movie, but not as Robin. No, 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 as the caped crusader himself. but there is also a rumor going around that we could get our first look at the JGL Batman in the form of a cameo at the end of The Man of Steel. All the speculation is based on talk from industry experts and the belief that Warner Brothers wants to set up the Justice League franchise in a similar way to what Marvel did with the Avengers. So there's your daily dose of rumor news. I'm Sarah Underwood, and you've just been fed. Stay tuned. Comedian Brett Gelman gives Matt my like your cop shooting unlicensed guns instead of sipping coffee at a donut shop? You'll want to tune into G4 this Saturday for a marathon of dirty, hairy movies. Clint Eastwood punches punks, scoffs at women, and parks in the red zone all day long. Please welcome Brett Gelman, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you for wearing a hat with a B. Thank you. I want to, I want to address the hat yes, really please. quick. Go ahead. I am not trying to hide my, my baldness. Okay. I just, you know, when you're doing these types of things, you want to have a great outfit. If I didn't have the hat, it's, yeah. it's not the same. No. Don't pay attention to the horrible <laughs> what's going on with my hair. I did shower today. <laughs> I have product in. What, 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 but what product do you have in there, Brett? I use uh, Sumo Tech. Sumo Tech? Yeah. Now it's great here. for the remaining hair. Oh, God. <laughs> it's great for sculpting the remaining hair and making me look distinguished rather than sad. You, I look at, I look at you right now. I just see a gentleman. Thank you very That's much. That's what I try right? to project. Uh, project. Hey, 
Likewise. Oh, thank oh, you. Yeah. I would I'd be freaking out. My hair, I feel like it's my only thing that I have, and I'm losing it. It's going pretty quickly. People are like, you're crazy, but I see the bald spot. You go through the freak out. Yeah, <laughs> it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not like, it's not like this. No. But uh, that's not even a spot. That's but, just bald. It's getting <laughs> just I bald. Will, I am coming up from behind. No, I'm gonna I mean, catch you on the bald. When I started situation. thinning, I really freaked out about it. It's the worst thing in the world, guys. I don't know if you know this about uh, men, ladies. Uh, when we start losing our hair, it's the worst thing that could possibly happen. To yeah, us. it's yeah. not good. It's not good. It's you know. But. I have uh, I have Rogaine at home, and uh -huh. uh, here's the deal. I can't commit to it. Don't do it. You don't need, the, you don't need those chemicals going into your body. You I like know? once a day, I'll be like, hey, look at that. I'll put we, it in my head, and then we, I'll be like, mm, no, for a like, week, I forget. I wanted to maybe get on that Propecia. I thought about that for a second. Sure. Doesn't it terrify you? It talks you? about like, certain affecting your Plus, reproductive anything, organs. No, anything that you see out there that says pregnant women should not approach a broken pill. Oh, yeah. Man. It's probably not good. No, don't take that. Go bald. Go probably bald. not good. Just go shave your save your babies and just shave. If I, I mean, at a certain point, I'll just shave my head. I'll well, go I do. Bruce I, Willis. I, I'm not going to just... lie. I, I have like four hairs right here that uh -huh. I shave off. <laughs> of course you do. Sometimes I forget, and then I have forehead stubble. But in 10 years from now, if you have, 10 years from now, if you have hair, hair like mine, yeah. Make sure a have. barber once, like, I have, like, a little hair here, and he, like, shaved it off. And so when it was growing back, I looked like I had, like, a soul patch. Oh, it's, it's the worst thing in the world. And a thinning, a thinning soul patch. You are committed even, to it. like, a thick once one. It even ha once even a hair goes up there, you have to commit to it for the rest of your life. You do. Or you have to go through the awkward stage. Once, when I was 18, I shaved my head, OK? Uh -huh. oh. Turns out I got all sorts of divots up here. Right. All sorts. And it looked like I had Down syndrome. Right. Like, it, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. No, no, no. You're being hard on yourself. No, no, no. You're being I, if, hard on yourself. If I had a picture with me, I would, I would show you. I don't have that picture. Well, I burned it. Hey, you know. But no, it's the thing. Like, if you you got to deal with it. You got to shave it. You got to shave it. You got to shave it. Yeah. Don't yeah. don't be. I shaved it. About I it. have shaved it. But what's then it, I was like, like, that's not really what a comedian like me should be doing. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, I'm badass. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. You ever you... think about shaving it? Just did you shave it and just leave the beard? Uh, yeah. Okay. And then I also <laughs> didn't have a beard at times, and that was really strange. Now, here's the deal. You have one of the great, you have one of the great beards. Right. Yeah. yeah. He does, he does, cool. yeah. yeah. Uh, here's my deal. I yeah. try to grow a beard. Yeah. It, uh, it comes in okay. Right. But then this part decides it's not going to do anything. That looks thick, though. That it looks does. It's thick. deceiving. You got to shave and grow, shave and grow. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, keep shaving and growing. I really just wanted him on the show to have beard advice. <laughs> That's the only reason I wanted to break up with him. this is actually pretty thin right That's here. That's thin for you? This is way thicker yeah. because I made big mistakes and grew goatees. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, and this wasn't grown and shaved as much, and this is thinner. It's, I did, it, oh. There is an illusion here. I did that on. in college for a while. I had, I had the beard going, yeah. but then I was like, I'm going to be like Commander Riker and shave it here. <laughs> right. And keep it short. Bad move. It, really, when I really when I committed to the beard yeah. was after I saw the hangover, and I was like, oh, that guy. That's your ticket. That, whoever that guy is, that guy's <laughs> huge now. <laughs> I got to do that. Of course. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And I saw Bradley I, uh, Cooper in the same movie and started doing crunches. Right. <laughs> it has not paid off yet. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, let's My mother that. started wearing glasses because of that Helms. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, weird. Oh, no. Uh, My uh, mom started taking her top off in movies because of Heather Graham uh -huh. in The Hangover. Right. The Hangover influenced everyone. So many, just a generation sense. of people. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that movie where uh, they presuppose that the uh, Confederacy won the Civil War, <laughs> and then they have the Confederate States of Union. You know what I mean? There's yeah. that movie that they do. Right. It's like if. If The Hangover didn't exist, I don't want to see what society would be like now. No, 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 no. no. Wouldn't be a We'd good be place. We'd be in big trouble. <laughs> anyway, Brad, I hear you're on Go a, On yeah, on NBC. Yeah. Yes, yes. Which, uh, you're in group therapy in that. You got, we finally found a vehicle that we accept Matthew Perry in after Friends. <laughs> Matthew is, uh, yeah, he's fantastic. Your character, though, Mr. K, right? Yeah. He strikes me as a lovable Hannibal Lecter type. That's what I've, that's what I've said about him. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, um, 
Yeah, no, he is. He is. I think, you know, he's an observer. Yeah. Like Lecter, and he, uh, I think, you know, he has certain motivations or certain, you know, ways of acting out that are not in the norm. Yeah. However, I don't think he wants to do anybody harm. Right. He all. doesn't have, like, a liver. No, no, no. He doesn't want to kill or yeah. eat people or, uh, you Does know, he want to get... sexually abuse people he in any to, way. He doesn't want to get in the head of any female no, FBI no. agents. But no, no. I will say this about Lecter. Very charming. Oh. Yeah. Very the charming. The most charming. Yeah. Very I would, charming. I would let him cut my head open yeah. and eat that part of my brain. Yeah, It's exactly. from the second movie. You probably didn't see that one. <laughs> Forget and, it. And though I think I'm very lovable, <laughs> <laughs> I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't say the, I wouldn't say the character's charming. Right, yeah. He's not well, necessarily I mean, like a guy who you would want to be like. There is like something about Lecter. Maybe this is just me. But you're like, ooh, he's so like smooth. Yeah, it's like if instead of a secret agent, James Bond ate people's faces. Right. That's that's yeah. Hannibal Lecter in a nutshell. But that's Anthony Hopkins. Ah, oh, he's so. And if great. I was playing Lecter, it would not be like that. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, you know what? I don't, I don't need it. I'll ask uh, the guy over in the next who just uh, threw the stuff in my hair. I don't need, uh, I don't need to talk to you about I that. I thought we wanted a charming Lecter. Who is this guy? <laughs> I don't know a, who that guy it's is. A bumbling. <laughs> Bumbling, kind of slightly <laughs> grotesque Lecter. <laughs> really Jewish Lecter. Oh. <laughs> Brian Cox Lecters. was also a great Lecter. Brian Cox, yes, he was not bad. And Manhunter, yep, which Manhunter, is a great film. Manhunter, if you film. don't know about that, kids, go rent yeah, it. Very Ask your film. parents Michael to rent Mann. it for you. Michael Mann, excellent director. Great. But you know who else is excellent? This man right here. Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, thank you to Brett Gelman for being here. You can watch Go On this very evening on NBC, and you can listen to Brett's podcast, Gelmania, which is an excellent podcast. It's on iTunes or Earwolf.com. And now, over to the lovely Candace Bailey. Thank you. Up next, it's DV Tuesday when Chris Gore reviews Paranorman and the bootlegging drama Lawless. Tomorrow on Attack of the Show. CSI's Elizabeth Arnois drops by the studio live with the latest on the crime scene procedural. Then Matt Meyer rates Nikon's newest DSLR, the D600. Will this 24 megapixel camera be a five out of five? Find out on Gadget Prime. And Andy Allo goes mano a mano with the legend himself, Jean-Claude Van Damme, when she checks out Universal Soldier 4. It's Attack of the Show tomorrow at seven. Welcome back, film expert Chris Gore. Thank you. Everyone's very happy to have you here. I'm happy to be here. But let's dude. jump into let's it. Up. What's up first? What's up? We have Men in Black 3. Ooh. Now, did you like how they took the story back to the 60s in this? I, I really do like the this approach to this, because it's in a way kind of a prequel in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, because you see Kay's character, which is played by, you know, Tommy Lee Jones, now played by Josh Brolin in the 60s, which is, it's such a great story twist. Um, and Jermaine Clement so good as the alien in, in the story. And it's really funny how, like, um, I mean, it's, the, the space program is also a part of this. Anything with the space program, uh -huh. very interesting, a lot of fun. And there's a great scene, actually, where we all find out that supermodels are aliens, which I have long suspected. Yeah. Of course they are. Sus Nobody looks like that in real life. Yeah, they're, they're aliens. And uh, an amazing, also cameo, Bill Hader plays Andy Warhol in it. Uh -huh. So, And also, this is one of the things where I my hopes for this weren't were very high because we've seen a lot of, you know, sequels where they waited too long to make the sequel. So mm -hmm. I thought, uh, I don't know, could this be good? And I, it delivered. It's actually much better than Men in Black 2, which was kind of a disappointment. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So what's the bottom line? Bottom line is you should rent this. Really fun. Okay. Guaranteed good time. I brag, but I'm going to for a second. I got Please. to go to the special effects studio where all that stuff was made, and I got to see all the aliens and stuff. It was really cool. And the little tiny one with the spiky things. You mean they're not real? They're totally real. They're not real. What's our next DVD? The next DVD, Paranorman. Now, a lot of adults loved this animated film, but what's it about? It's from the makers of Coraline. It's about this kid, Norman, who's kind of a weirdo. I can relate to him. He can, he <laughs> Me can, too. He can talk to the dead, and through a spell, uh, the dead rise as zombies and attack the town. What's amazing about this is it's stop motion animated, and it's a style where it's so good, the animation is so good in this, that 
you, you, for a minute you think, is this CGI? Mm -hmm. It's right. it's so incredible, and the characters, I mean, Anna Kendrick as Norman's uh, older sister is hilarious in it. It's just really? a really good cast. It's it's also something that appeals both to adults and kids, and it is creepy scary. Okay, are there any special features? Amazing special features, I will say this, uh, the end credits for this are incredible because they actually show wow. the making of one of the a animatronic That's dolls. That's really cool, it's, I love that. This is, but that's right at the end credits. And then what, what I learned about this, watching all the special features, is the reason that they were so expressive with their faces is they used a 3D printer. So normally oh, really? a character might have, you know, 15, 20 expressions. And this, they had hundreds of different faces for each of the characters using a 3D printer because uh, they, they designed it on the computer. Technology. And the, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. And I've, I mean, I've done I've done little stop motion anime movies since I was a kid. Uh, and, and so Aww, just watching how the process cute. has evolved, well, thank you for saying that. <laughs> uh, watching so how the cool. process has evolved with technology is incredible. So Paranorman appeals Across Bottom line? Bottom line, buy it. All right. All right. 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 Some buys. What else do you have to check out? Lawless. Lawless. So this film is about bootlegging during Prohibition? Oh, yeah. Once in America, alcohol was illegal. Oh. Oh. No, I can't terrible. imagine such madness. It's terrible. But um, uh, this film was originally called uh, The Wettest County. Um, okay. Which would be a, a, a great title for, for an adult porn. film. <laughs> right. But, but it's actually about this this real county that where 90% of the people actually participated in, in making illegal alcohol, and all the cops were bought off in the town. And it's horribly violent with a, an amazing cast Guy Pierce, Gary Oldman, Tom Hardy's in it, Shia LaBeouf. And Is the, it gory violent or just violent? Oh, it's really gory it's violent. Really gory. I mean, just like horribly gory violent. Okay. What's I, I think, the bottom line? Sorry well, to rush you along. Yeah, yeah. Me Online is rent it. I just feel like Boardwalk Empire is sort of the same story material, so. But better or the same? I think that's better. Okay, all right. Well, it's still worth it. Worth Time for a quick pick. Okay. Oh, no, uh, for one more film. One more film. <laughs> Expendables 2. Okay. It's, it's like Crisis on... It's like... If you're a DC Comics fan, it's like Crisis on Infinite Earths, but with action heroes. Chuck Norris, Dolph Lundgren, Stallone, Bruce Willis, Jason Statham. I mean, I, I, it's it's an incredible... Jet Li, it's it's everyone you love on one movie, but I almost feel like I would have loved to have seen if they made this movie in the 80s with all of these... Yeah. these people. Some when of them you go, prime. Some of the people you're looking going, is that Dolph Lundgren? I don't know. I think it's Dolph Lundgren. I think it is. So what's the bottom line? Bottom line is rented. Right. Still okay. a lot of fun. Still, so you still want to see it. Yeah. All right. Thank well, you, Chris. Worth. For more of Laura, check out his podcast. Fun show. Oh, it was the yeah. most fun. Those are some good interviews you had. Uh, you know, my skills are very specific. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. But no, I don't it was, know what that means it was good to learn about Propecia. I'm going to look into it. <laughs> I don't think you should. What? I don't think you need it. Although, Talk to I me did in a notice year. yesterday these little yeah, few hairs. That's what I'm talking I was like, about. What, what is that like that for? I thought they it's were just hairs going in. It's my forehead stubble, okay? <laughs> okay? Thanks to our guest, Karen Gillian. Chris Gore and the lovely and talented Sarah Underwood. Good night. Good night. Send me some Propecia, please. I don't have health insurance.